All right, we're going to look at building a digital rhythm here today. I have a beat programmed. Um, let's listen to how it sounds. And I want to add a swing to that. I do not want a really tight, hard swing on it. I want it to be relaxed, usually for reggae. So I'm going to go with the 66%. And let's see how that sounds. Right, so that's proper. Next step, I'm going to set up the drums. Uh, this is V-Prom, is the instrument here from Ali James Lab. It has the sounds of the Lin LM1, which uh, has been used in countless, either the LM1 or the Lin drum that came out after. Been using a lot, a lot, a lot of dance hall songs from the mid 80s there. So I'm just going to adjust some tuning on these things. Uh, the kick generally happy with where it is by default uh, but we're going to adjust the snare and the hi-hat and the uh, rim shot the tambourine a bit okay let's do that All right, that is sounding a lot more the way we want it to. And um, after that, we're going to add in the bass line. Right now, it is just playing a default sound from this uh, TAL bass line 101. Um, I'm just using this to show you easily how to set up a decent sound. Um, I would probably be using my base station, my hardware base station, because I really like the bass on that, but we're going to get a similar sound here off of this for sure. So the default sound is sounding like this. And what we want to do is not use the saw wave. We want to use the square wave. And then we're going to adjust the cutoff. Alright, so there's a variety of sounds within a zone here um, that will would have been used in a lot of this style of reggae and still does get used. Um, you want to have most of the harmonics filtered out. Depending on the sound you're going after, you know, you might want to use it sometimes uh, a little more, get a little bit of the harmonics in. Other times, you know, you're just going more for the solid sub sound. The resonance. Depends on where you end up. Play with it a bit and see if you like what it does to the sound. And we're going to add just a little bit of release to it as well.
All right, that's good there. So um, the default sound has this set on gate, so uh, it just plays according to the gate. So as I was turning up the release, you weren't really hearing a difference in the release of the sound. You click it to envelope, and uh, then the envelope kicks in. Let's just hear it again. Right, that's sounding proper. Uh, the keyboards is the next thing. I have a little piano part programmed here. Um, everything is looping, obviously. You know, this would get um, run out to the full length of the song afterwards. Uh, I would add some variation on the piano. There's one little variation here, and um, we would go from there. Of course, uh, another popular thing is to take, take the bass and play it up an octave. Um, we can just do that quickly. So for some part of the song, you know, you could kick that in up an octave. Uh, it's a common thing that was done a lot, again, in these style of rhythms. And you just heard the keys playing a bit. Um, I like to use a key sound that is not totally realistic. You know, something that sounds like it's uh, coming from a bit of a, a more of a lo-fi kind of a keyboard. Um, I have a few different things that I use for that. Right now, for this one, I'm using a contact instrument. And if contact loads up here, we'll see what it is. Uh, this is by Synth Magic. Um, there's five different sounds here. Sometimes I'll throw two of these in and layer them and just adjust the levels as to how I want it to sound. But um, we can just play these five sounds for you here. So there's the sounds, and although, you know, they're not so great on their own, they fit in for this style of music for sure. Um, again, you want something that is more digital or lo-fi sounding. Uh, I do use sometimes um, some digital sounding keyboards. Um, this hybrid keys here uh, works good as well. You can load in two different sounds and mix them, and plus there's a... Uh, a bit reducer on there or sample rate I'm not sure one of them uh, I think it's a bit reducer and you can add some grit to your sound there's a lot of different ways to get the sound you can always just throw on a sample rate a bit rate reducer you know in your in your uh, in an insert spot and get some of that lo-fi sound uh, generally the keys weren't overly bright you know usually a little more on the on the dull full low low uh, low mid side um, so I'm just sticking with this single sound right now but like say with these five sounds available here you can get some nice layering going on just with this alone um, so that is the basic rhythm there um, let's add some effects a little bit uh, some reverbs on the drums and a little reverb for the piano and we will then um, put a quick mix on this. I'm going to use um, Eventide SP2016. 
for the drums, uh, probably for the keyboard too. Uh, but I'm going to load it in mono for the drums and load in a little stereo version for the uh, keys. So let me get that set up here. Right, so that's the basic sound for the drum, uh, the drum reverb. Um, all I did, I pulled down the decay a bit, uh, turned up the low frequency uh, to 350 hertz, and reduced down the level of that, and um, turned the high frequency up to six and a half hertz, and reduced the level of that somewhat as well. Um, it's a really nice reverb. I like this a lot, uh, especially for. It fits in really nice on a lot of stuff, on vocals and stuff on uh, in a lot of mixes. But um, on these digital style rhythms, it works out really nice as well. Um, this position switch gives you some nice variety to the sound of the reverb as well, making your sounds uh, sound more up front or back. Uh, works really good. I also boosted the diffusion all the way up to get it as smooth sounding as possible. So... Um, Let's go ahead and do the same thing here for the keyboard. Right, let's put a little bit of a mix on this. Uh, start out with the kick. And uh, we'll just go through. You'll see what I'm going to, what I'll be doing on the screen easily enough. Uh, using SoftTube Console 1 with the default SSL 4K channel in there.
So the hi-hat is really has quite a bit of low end in it um, on this machine. And uh, I do use a lot more of a high cut than I would normally use to uh, to dial in the sound that you want. For reggae, you know, I like to have a nice, light, crisp, floating kind of hi-hat. You don't really want a lot of heaviness down in it. All right, that's sounding pretty good for the drums, I think. Uh, we'll add in the bass and then the keys, make some little adjustments on those as well. That's sounding good there. Just remove the little of the uh, low mids a bit just to clean it up. It's a little, little bit kind of muddy sounding and um, boosted a little bit of the sub. Keys now. Right, so that's sounding okay. Um, let's just do a quick bypass of uh, all the effects. Uh, not all the effects, but the EQ anyways. That's the biggest thing affecting the sound here. Um, I'll just turn it off and turn it back on for you so you can hear the difference that it really makes. It's a lot of small changes. I didn't do anything really major, but when you add it all up, the impact is bigger than just the little changes you're making. again here.
that is basically it. Um, the only other thing on the master bus, I am using a Britson bus on here from Sonomus um, with the fat mode on. Definitely, um, it's it's subtle, but adds a nice little little bit of sound to it, um, vintage sort of sound to it, um, more like coming out of a Neve console. And um, also using IK Multimedia's bus compressor. I uh, have the high pass on to 150, otherwise the bass just drives it way too much. I have the grit mode on, and um, I, there shouldn't really be too much gain reduction happening here. Yeah, so a couple dB is all. And I also like to use Yuhi Satin uh, for a tape effect. I recently picked up soft tube tape, which I use sometimes as well, but I have some presets in Satin already that I like to use, and it is, it's a lot more tweakable in some ways, so I like the sound of that. So I'll just bypass all three of these and play it, and then uh, I'll turn them on. And uh, that is it for this. Uh, you can hear the difference uh, with the bus effects on or off. Again, um, these first one is very subtle. Um, the bus compressor, again, is not set really hard. You're not hearing a huge difference there. You're hearing a, a little bit more with satin when it goes off and on, uh, just because of the impact it has to the overall sound, um, the EQ, the way it's affected as well, depending on how you're driving it. I don't get really crazy with bus processing for for years I never did any I just recently started doing it um, but I keep it minimal uh, that's the most that I would do there and uh, that's it uh, this is bypassed this is uh, IK Multimedia's Arc 2 and that's just for I'm using my headphones now so I don't want it on but uh, it's just a bit of room correction when I'm using my monitors so that is it thanks for checking out the video uh, from here, you know, you would run this track out to the length you want, program in a couple of drum rolls where you want them, um, modify that keyboard part a bit, maybe, like I say, uh, knock the keyboard, the bass up an octave somewhere along the lines, and, um, you know, if you want some sort of a melody instrument or something in there, you would throw that in. That's it. You got a vintage type of uh, dance hall, early dance hall rhythm there digital style.